good day gamers it's frosty back at it again with another guide today i'm going to take you through arguably the toughest map in the game bloody puddles it sure is a challenge but we'll guide you through it step by step so let's get stuck right into it okay so the start definitely the hardest part about this map there's really no good lineup here so i use four markers first the top right on the circle will hit the corner of the tire mark here Next, the bottom right of the circle will barely touch the grass line. Third, the top left indicator will point to the right of the circle in the middle of the tire here. And lastly, the fin of the sub will touch both points on the top of the pond. If you don't get a first try, don't worry. It's the single toughest placement in the entire game. Keep trying and you'll eventually get it. Start placement thankfully is a little bit more simple. We'll generally look for three things. Top right of the side circle will hit the tip of the tire tread. The top left of the side circle will cover more than half of the left track. And the bottom left will barely end up touching the track. Leave the dart on last. Even if you get this correct, there is still a chance that this setup will fail. Maybe about 20% of the time. So once again, just get lucky. You'll know whether you've gotten this setup correct on round 7, but you should be able to snipe this balloon. If you manage to do it, congratulations! You've beaten 2 rounds out of 95. The next style will go as far up and left as possible while barely touching the right pool. Set it to strong and your other dart to first. On round 9, place a sub in the middle of the pool, in the right of the divot. In the middle of round 10, purchase a sniper here. Set it to strong immediately. On round 11, you'll switch your sniper back to first and purchase a dart monkey in the middle of the round here. Don't wait too long or it's game over. You'll switch your sniper back to strong at the end of the round, then fast forward all the way to round 14, where you'll purchase Quincy right here. The best indicator is the bottom left of the sight line hits the middle of the left track. Play round 14 slow and get ready for round 15, the second hardest round on the map. Your top sniper will start on strong and you'll immediately purchase another sniper when you have the money for it. Switch that to strong as well. If a green or higher quality makes it past either the truck or the rocks, you'll swap it to first to try to catch it, and then immediately swap it back to strong. Congratulations on making it past round 15, you've now made it past 10 rounds. Only 85 more to go. Chill through round 16, and after it's completed, grab a dart monkey at the top of the small puddle. Don't grab it during the middle of round 16, as you need to buy as much time for rapid fire's cooldown to come back up. Grab longer range on the top sub, and then immediately rapid fire at the start of round 17. After round 18, grab advanced intel on your top sub. 19 and 20 should be no problem, so get twin guns on your top sub, and then once again immediately rapid fire at the start of round 21. Here's arguably the last tricky bit of the run here, round 22 and round 23. There's potentially a bit of sniper micro needed here, so be warned. First, grab another dart monkey above the truck. Again, I would advise switching your sniper to first if a green balloon or higher makes it past either one of these points, and switch it back to strong after. Upgrade your left sniper to full metal jacket before round 23, and then apply the same logic to this round as well. Don't micro your right sniper as it cannot see the full lane. After round 24, upgrade your right sniper as well to full metal jacket. On round 25, rapid fire on the purple balloons. There'll be a brief break after the yellows come out, but don't use it too soon. Now on round 27, you'll purchase airburst darts once you have the money, and then upgrade it to triple guns on round 30. After round 32, grab enhanced eyesight on your bottom right dial monkey for camo detection, Grab a druid next to your truck monkey and progressively upgrade it to druid of the jungle by the start of round 35. At the start of round 36, press the rapid fire button. After round 36, place your first village roughly here. You'll note that it currently sees no targets, but that's on purpose. Don't place it too high up or you won't be able to fit a second village later on. Grab both discount upgrades for your village and at the end of round 37, rapid fire the camo wave. Now place down an alchemist at the bottom of the village radius there. Make sure it sees the sub and upgrade it to acidic drip. Then berserker brew after round 38. After round 39, place two blue monkeys. One of them in between Quincy and the sniper here, and the other in the middle of the curve here. Upgrading both of them to 110. On round 40, rapid fire immediately. And if everything has gone correctly, all four ceramics will get glued and be slowed. Congratulations, that's really the last challenging round left. Let's walk through the rest. Start by placing the second village down to the left of your other one. If you can't fit it, well... 
Try again, Bucko. Again, you'll upgrade this one with both discount upgrades. You'll also purchase a larger radius on your other village, and then a sniper up above your other sniper in range of both discount villages, and upgrading it up to shrapnel shot. Now on 43, upgrade the shrapnel sniper with go fast bullets, then rapid fire the ceramics. Save your money up to round 45, we will purchase bouncing bullets. Give it a berserker brew buff as well while you're at it. Rapid fire the ceramics again on round 47, and then upgrade your ride village to jungle drums. Before round 49, upgrade your sniper below the bouncing bullets to a deadly precision. This sniper will get upgraded once more to main mob with shrapnel shot in the middle of round 50. You'll then upgrade your berserker brew close to your sniper to a stronger stimulant with middle cross path. Before 55, add another sniper down next to your other alchemist and upgrade it to bouncing bullets, always with the bottom cross path. Make sure every sniper is in range of both villages, but this build is very tight on money. After round 57, once again, another wacky sniper. Upgrade Alchemist again to Stronger Stimulant. This will be more than enough to crush round 60. Past round 60, we have to place down two more snipers and an Alchemist. Place both snipers here and here, and the Alchemist here. I suggest placing the Alchemist first, but what can I say, I like to live life on the edge. Upgrade one of the snipers to Bouncing Bullet before round 63, then arrow storm the first wave of 63, and finish cross pathing your sniper. The rest of 63 should pose no threat, but I'd still recommend upgrading your Alchemist to Berserker Brew as you get the money. Now we're going to chill for a bit. When you have enough money, upgrade your top sniper to Supply Drop, which should be around round 69. Now you can chill all the way to just before round 75, where you'll upgrade this sniper to a full auto rifle, and grab large caliber while you're at it. The sniper will stay on first. Once again, you can now feel free to autopilot yet again, all the way to 78. On 78, you'll have to arrow storm the camel wave of ceramics. So long as you get one side, it should be all good. With the influx of money, you can now finally grab elite sniper during or after round 79. You'll also want to set your main sniper to elite. Time to cruise once more, all the way till 83, where you'll purchase elite defender. Now you're in the end game. You'll finish up your final bouncing bullet sniper and upgrade the alchemist to a stronger stimulant. It's time to upgrade your other village now, all the way up to an MIB. We've gotten our main damage source, it's now time to complement this all with a ton of support. Firstly, you'll grab a glue and place it up in the range of the villages. Do note that in my run, my right village is slightly mispositioned, meaning that I can't get jungle drums or a second discount for my glue, and on my elite defender sniper as well. However, it's not the end of the world, as you'll soon see, and uh, know that I'm still posting this run, so, you know, just saying. Anyway, upgrade it to more glue and get the first upgrade of the mill cross path. You'll also grab the glue down the bottom here and upgrade this with the exact same cross path. Now place two boomerangs here and here. These will be upgraded to more presses with top cross paths. Both will be set to strong. You'll grab the first one after 92 and then the second after 94. You'll now grab an ice monkey in range of both villages and upgrade it to embrillment with the mill cross path. Don't get deep freeze though, we don't need the PS. From here, grab a ninja in the middle of both villages, preferably as far away from alchemists as possible, and then press play on 95. After, upgrade your ninja to sabotage. You'll only ever use it once, but it's still very useful. After 96, change your main targeting to first. You'll be left there for the rest of the run. Begin to upgrade your bottom sub with the middle cross path up to ballistic missile. Time for 98. Only one button to press, and that's rapid fire. You'll press it when the BFBs make it to this bend of the curve. Done correctly, you'll melt the left side and have plenty of time to clean up the right side. After, you'll upgrade your sub to first track. For 99, press sabotage as soon as you see big scary fast glue. Before round hundo, grab an overdrive here. You'll first strike as soon as you can, and then rapid fire an arrow storm when the BAD starts getting attacked by Imbrilman. Lastly, you'll take your hands off the keyboard, because you're done! Congratulations on making it through one of the toughest maps in the game. Hope this guide helped out. If it did, leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Catch you all next time.